Yeah. What? Yeah. Did, did, <laughs> the Jews are black and their originally home line would come from Ethiopia and that was over 12,000 years. That's where they sprang from. And that's the that's another thing. Here's the continent of Africa. But they say that's Middle East. That's part of Africa, but they changed the name. Yeah. To just throw you off, okay? Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, did, did, <laughs> the Jews are black and their originally home line would come from Ethiopia and that was over 12,000 years. That's where they sprang from. And that's the that's another thing. Here's the continent of Africa. But they say that's Middle East. That's part of Africa, but they changed the name. Yeah. To just throw you off, okay? Yeah. Shalom. Kalayla. Yahweh Bahashim. Yahweh Shai. Bahashim. Rakat Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled Israel, a promised seed. Just want to briefly go into the promises of the Most High being only to the children of Israel the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this man is right on a couple of things, but the thing that he goes off on is that we did not stem out of Ethiopians. Okay, that's false. But Israel is a part of Africa. The northeastern region of Africa is the land of Israel. The Middle East term was made up and if I'm not mistaken, made up in the 1860s. Let me pull this up. I think it was in the 1860s when the creation of the Suez Canal. Let's see. One moment. Middle East term origin, 1850s from the web may have originated in the 1850s from the British India office. And in 1902, the term Middle East was coined in order to designate the area residing between Egypt and Singapore. Now I know that the Suez Canal was also a key geographical planning area or key terrain that drove that planning to carve out the Middle Eastern region, which helped to facilitate trade. I'm not seeing that in here. Let's see one moment. Term Middle East in Suez Canal. It's not showing up here. Let's try it this way. Origin. Okay, the Suez Canal It's not given the years. Okay, here we go. The Suez Canal stretches 120 miles from Port Said on the Mediterranean Sea in Egypt, southward towards the city of Suez on the northeastern shores of the Gulf of Suez. The canal separates the bulk of Egypt from the Sinai Peninsula, it took 10 years to build. 
and was efficiently officially opened November 17th, 1869. So not off. It started around 1859. So the estimate was right in that ballpark. And they begin to carve out that region called the Middle East, which is a man-made name that was in existence, in existence prior to the British name in that area, the Middle East. Let's just go here. Not going to make this long. So this is a broader overview of where Israel is. North Eastern Africa. So this whole region that was named by the British, the Middle East, is intended to create confusion. And the funny thing is, many people that you meet from Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Tunisia, they don't consider themselves to be African. They'll get offended if you call them African. So it created these, these man-made terms like black and white, so to speak. That's what people are driven by. This weird self or socially engineered new racial structure, black and white, which is totally off and bugged out. The world is deceived under this black and white narrative. It creates nothing but mass confusion. You are the seed of your father, period. So they just try to separate themselves based on that. So notice where Israel is here. Let's zoom in here. Northeastern Africa. So the original Jews are dark skinned. Now we know that Israelites did get scattered into Ethiopia and Moses married an Ethiopian woman. There's a false doctrine out there that the Jews are all Ethiopian, which is totally bugged out, totally bugged out. And they teach that Haile Selassie is, what's the term they call him? They basically elevate him into a God status in a replace of a replacement of Yahweh Shai or our Lord and Savior. It's a totally false doctrine. Okay, let's go here. <coughs> I'm going to go here. Genesis 15, verse 18. The book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 18. Let's go to verse 17. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given the land from the river of Egypt Unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Let's go back to the map. <clears throat> back to the map. So the river of Egypt, as you can see here, to the river Euphrates. And Euphrates River runs through Iraq. You have the Tigris and the Euphrates River. As you can see here on the on the map. So this is the promised land promised to the Israelites. And really, it's going to incorporate this region here. There's a reason that many clandestine or secret operations went into the Middle East region. And all types of subversion was created there to topple the governments of Ethiopia, Libya, Egypt. 
Iraq. See? So this is when you look up or do a Google search on the greater Israel region or the greater Israel map. This shows up. See? So the Edomites are trying to create their own promises. They're trying to obtain these regions through their military apparatus by their blessing being the sword. So they believe that they can use their blessing of the sword to seize control of these lands by military conquest. And this is what they're attempting to do. Let's go back to that. Genesis 15, verse 18. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given the land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Let's look up Abram's name. Abram's name. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H87, Avram, Avram. Exalted Father, Exalted Father. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to Genesis 17. Let's go to verse 6. Well, we got to go up. Genesis 17. Abraham and the covenant of circumcision. Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty power. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shall be a father of many nations. And this can, yes, Abraham is the father of many nations. But there is one chosen line, one chosen line. And if I'm not mistaken, there are eight, there are eight Hebrew families, but there is only one chosen line and the Hebrews, which are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when the Bible is talking about the God of the Hebrews, it's only referring to his chosen ones. Okay, the, and father of many nations. Let's keep going. Genesis 17, verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Let's look up Abraham. Abraham. Okay, it's not pulling it up here. One moment. Here we go. Abraham. Strong's H85. Avraham. Avraham. Father of a multitude or chief of multitude. So his name changed from being exalted father to a father of a multitude. Keep going. I'm going to read as to why. Let's go here. 
to Genesis 17, verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a power unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. So what nations is he talking about? Let's go to Genesis 32 and 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 32. Let's go to verse 12. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed in the sand as the sand of the sea. We got to go up. Genesis 32. Let's go to verse verse 4. Genesis 32, verse 3. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus, and he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my Lord, Esau, thy servant Jacob, saith this, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have seen, and I have oxen and asses, flocks and manservants and woman servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and herds and the camels into two bands. Now remember in the in chapter 27, Rebekah had already warned Jacob that Esau, his brother, was planning to kill him. So this brought distress upon Jacob in dealing with his brother Esau. Verse 7, let's go to verse 8, and said, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. So Jacob created a an egress plan of escape. Verse 9, and Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which saith unto me, Return unto thy country, and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. Let's look up that word kindred. Kindred comes from the Hebrew Strong's H forty one thirty eight Moledeth Moledeth Lineage Offspring Begotten Kindred Native So return unto thy flesh and blood Let's go back Genesis 32, verse 9. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and power of my father Isaac, the Lord which saidest unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. So the Most High is only dealing with Jacob. Let's go to verse 10. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I pass over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, 
from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. So this perpetual hatred has not gone away from the Edomites. Their forefather, Esau, basically shares the same spirit of vengeance and a murderous mindset towards the Israelites. Let's get the key point that I wanted to get. Genesis 32, verse 12. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So Israel is as the sand of the sea scattered into all nations, called a great multitude. So when you read Revelations, where is it at? I think it's seven and nine. Revelations, who is called a great multitude? Revelation seven. See, here we go. Revelation seven, verse nine. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. See how that connects? So that great multitude are the Israelites. Let's go back to Genesis 32, verse 12. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So the Israelites are being gathered in Revelation chapter 12, starting with the tabernacle of David, which is at the beginning of Revelation 7, followed by a great multitude in Revelation 7 and 9, which are the remnant of hopeful elect that were scattered into all nations. Let's get one more. Revelations 35, let's go to verse 11. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. See, kings shall come out of thy loins. Wait a minute. Let's go to Revelations 5. Revelations 5, somewhere around verse 9. What kings? Revelations 5. Let's go to verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to the most high by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Remember those kindreds goes back to flesh and blood, goes back to tribes. Let's prove that. We'll read this verse. What Kings, Revelations 5 and 10 and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. See, so we understand the Bible by precepts. Let's go back to Genesis 35, I lost my place. Genesis 35 and 12, I believe. Genesis 35, verse 11. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, 
be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. See, when the Most High is talking to our forefather, Jacob, which changed his name unto Israel. So when we read Revelations 5 and 9, now it makes better sense. And then Revelations 5 and 10. Let's read 10 again. And has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Let's go into this word kindred. Kindred. Let me see your tongue. Right here. Kindred comes from the Greek. Strong's G 5443. Foulet. Foulet. Race. Clan. Tribe. See? Twelve tribes of Israel. Tribes. Nation. People. So when we read Genesis 17, verse 6, speaking to Abram, which changed his name to Abraham. Genesis 17, verse 6, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. See? So this passes down through Isaac to Jacob, followed by the 12 tribes of Jacob. Let's go to verse 7. Genesis 17, verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Everlasting and thy seed. This covenant is with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that will promise to get the Holy Land. Google greater Israel region. So that's why there's so much chaos in this area with a devoted, deliberate, dedicated agenda to seize lands that was not promised to anyone other than the 12 tribes of Israel, which starts with the elect. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakwa Kadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babao. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham, Shalom.